The game's focus on melee is one of the ways it stands out. A katana is typically romanticized as the perfect weapon. Well, it definitely works in Akane. Oh, the range puts you in close to enemies that will also slash you down. It's constantly stressful because you need to be quick and strike first. You'll quickly get a feel for the range of the sword. It's a little weird how it attacks the direction you're facing, especially if you play a lot of twin stick shooters. I had some trouble wrapping my brain around it at first. You get the hang of it and it definitely works, much better than having to worry about running around and tracking your mouse at the same time. You do need to worry about your stamina though. Swinging your sword is the only thing that takes away from it, so you're not going to be able to just run around swinging wildly. There's a great effect where the main character starts breathing heavy when the stamina is almost out. Very nice touch. The sword you use can be swapped out. The first sword gives you a bonus to stamina, which is a great starting sword. But the next sword gives you a new skill that when charged, cuts in 360 degrees. Very useful, but you'll miss the extra stamina. Still, it's a fair trade-off and a side grade, which keeps the first sword viable. Chopping down enemies is a ton of fun, specifically because of all the gore, but I don't think that that would be enough to hold my attention. Akane has an awesome special move. Once activated, the game goes into slow motion and you can position your dash. Any enemies in the way will be cut down. It's a fantastic dual purpose ability. It not only allows you to escape a bad situation, but you get to clear out some of the enemies too. One thing to consider is your position when the ability is finished. If you're right next to an enemy, they will not hesitate to slice and dice you. There's been a few times I was so excited that I cut through everyone that I didn't pay attention to where I was and that ended my run. The special move takes adrenaline, which fills up a bar at the bottom of the screen. The thing is, you need to keep that combo going to fill the bar. If you start running around without filling a section of the bar, you'll lose that entire portion. Akane pressures you into killing quick, and that's partly why it's so much fun. Utilizing the special move is key to staying alive. If you do manage to fill the meter completely, there's an ultimate version of the move. This will use the entire bar, but will kill everyone on the screen. It's enjoyable, but you lose the utility of the dash. I haven't found that I was so overwhelmed that I needed to use this ultimate version though. While I believe a good offense is the best defense, Akane has some defensive moves. You can use your sword to block, it's a timed skill that activates for a short bit. During this time, you will block sword attacks, but more importantly, you can deflect bullets. If you thought the game wasn't going to throw enemies with guns at you, I mean, you were wrong. I constantly forget to use the block and instead try and just cut all the enemies before they have a chance to attack me. So far, so good. Akane also has a dash skill that keeps you alive. Being able to quickly get to an enemy before they can do anything is important. It doesn't use any stamina, which is a bit strange for a game like this, so you'll be able to use the dash to get in and out of trouble. This is one of those skills you can swap out with gear as well. Changing your shoes will alter what you can do. For example, the next level boots allows you to run instead of dash. You do get a gun, but that's more about utility than anything else. You won't be using it too much since the ammo is extremely limited. The ammo replenishes slowly or gains a slight tick when you chop someone down. It's great for letting your stamina refill or continuing your combo from a distance when someone isn't in range. The guns are pretty accurate and the only time I miss is when I lost track of my mouse pointer. You do need the mouse pointer to aim the gun. While playing, you're trying to balance three things, your stamina, combo, and ammo. You don't want to run out of any while you keep your position moving so no enemies can get you. Position is important but there are individual tasks to complete for gear. These range from killing 50 enemies with the gun in one run to having 100% accuracy with the katana after 101 kills. And that's not random, you just need to beat the first boss without missing. They're difficult and it took me more than a few tries to get one. I like how the quests fit in with the goal of the game. 
You don't have to do anything weird to complete them. Just be good. Of course, you're also trying to get as far as possible with as many kills as possible. Every 100 kills, the boss Katsuro shows up. He starts at level 0 and gets stronger the further you get in the game. But if you beat him at level 2, then the next run through, the first time you see him, he'll be at level 2 instead of 0. It's a bit odd, but you'll be able to beat him at level 5 much faster than having to go through 500 enemies each time. This goes for everything else you encounter as well. If you meet assassins, then they can show up at any time going forward. So Akane could do a much better job explaining what the hell is going on. Specifically, the boldness stat isn't explained at all. But one of the quests I have is to reach 250 boldness. How? At the time I wrote this, I didn't know. It goes up as you get further into the game, so I was going with that strategy. That said, the developer wrote they're working to get the information in the game. That's great. They also said they're working on gamepad support and global leaderboards, if that's your thing. Quick dip into the options menu. The music gets kind of annoying, so I would suggest turning that down, but that does not change street sounds, so you'll still hear a lot of street background noises, then, and that, that's really tied to the sound effects, which I think is a bit odd, but whatever. It's actually better, so just maybe turn off the music. The monitor resolutions, I mean, that is really low. Please don't play on that resolution. It goes all the way up to my current resolution, 144, and that's been really solid. The pixel perfect stuff, I doesn't seem to be doing anything. Lights, there you go. You can see it happening in the background. The bloom, not really, it doesn't really look like it's changing much. Post screen processing, a little bit of something there with that. Shadows, we could disable shadows. Particle effects, that looks like they, that you can see it popping in and out in the background there. The details, oh, those are the small details around the edges screen. Pretty nice, you can see that popping in now. And V-Sync, I just always leave that off. Overall, Akane is a very simple but impressive game. I like it. I'm fond of slashing people to ribbons and seeing all the gore. The challenge is real, but the game is very fair. Special moves are a lot of fun and the whole theme is excellent. It's going to be a short experience, but for the price, I definitely think it's worth it. It'll probably be something I play for a short bit until I get bored, but for that time, I'll be having a lot of fun. If you like twin stick shooters with a ton of action, then you'll probably enjoy Akane. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe for more indie game reviews and check out the review of Tormentor X Punisher next to my head. Another amazing twin stick shooter game, more traditional, and it has bosses, crazy bosses, crazy way to get power-ups. Seriously, just check that one out. It's so good.